Now it's working. So, let's, uh, let's do this. Get number one of this best of five series as we do have to the bottom right hand side of the map. Our red Zerg player from Team Expert. It is Bly. He's going up against the blue Terran player to the upper left hand side. It is Future. All right, game number one in some Zerg versus Terran and Bly is already doing very Bly-esque sort of things. Pool first, which obviously opens up a lot of opportunities towards, you know, being a bit more aggressive in the game in general. So, going into this pool first here for now. Obviously already seen this uh, spawn pool just coming on up into a gas. I mean, it is a hatchery as well, so... Obviously, some macro-oriented sort of stuff behind it, but it might still very well be a rotor on a bit of a rotor ravager pressure initially. It could just be for feeling to lay the CC into just straight-up free hatches, etc. too. So, no kind of real confirmation just yet. And I have to say, the other day I was very impressed by Future taking down Soul. He actually knocked Soul into the lower bracket, where he was then just now defeated by Euphemal. So, do you see this command center coming on up, and... Uh, well, let's see if he continue to come down towards the lower right hand side to see just what's going on, popping in towards the natural and seeing what's happening. A couple of links coming up the right hand side. Let's do see two Zerglings just continue coming up here as well. That factory is indeed on the way down as well from future and the reactor starting to build up on the barracks, so Reactor starting to build up on the racks here. I'm just going to be seeing a couple of lingers do come in. I mean, Marine, just one Marine built and left at home behind this Reaper, so it's going to be kind of okay here to kind of uh, help to defend. We'll have a slight delay on the CC building, but again, should be able to fight this. Uh, yeah, especially if the link continues to go after the SCV a little bit, it'll be fine. And he actually does jump up into the main base, just to confirm the scout, he sees the double gas. I mean, what you can really see right now would be a single gas, would be very indicative of, like, a Freud Command Center coming down into play already. And so obviously that's just what Bly wants to scout for, double check for here. So coming on through, he sees no double gas, and that already is just, again, a big, uh, a big part of this for him. A few Ling is coming on up, and we do see Ling Speed going to kick in in a moment or two, as we do have... This Reaper being uh, pushed around just a little bit at the moment, so... A little bit of damage being dealt here. Is that Reaper going to be forced on the way down towards the low ground? We're going to be seeing the third hatchery starting up from Bly here over to the right side. And again, Lings. If I'd hit Lings, we so many Lings in production. So we are going to be seeing a ton of units going to be swarming on through towards the upper left. It's going to be a lot of Zerglings getting set and ready to go, so... Here we go, Bly just being kind of, I mean, typical Bly, right? Getting aggressive, getting ready to attack. No Eva Chamber to drop on through, he just wants to run into this natural and maybe grab us around on the Hellions and just sort of party from there. As uh, the lings in the back are taking a little while to kind of gather, and now Future has a good idea that these lings are coming in, so he actually starts the kite already. As CVs will pull forwards as well to help protect the Hellions. Ooh, one just gets caught a little bit to the top side, but the others seem to be pretty fine for now, and we are going to be seeing the, uh, the army, the Hellions, able to keep on cleaning this up. Seven more drones coming on through here. Queens continue to inject. Do you see that cloak is uh, on the way up here on this banshee? And we are going to see the Viking picks off an overlord. So, an overlord gets taken down, and we are going to be seeing future just moving around here. See what else is happening. Lair and a Rotoron starts to drop down here from Bly. So, getting set up and towards that, and obviously hoping for a whole chunk of roaches start coming out as well. A few Hellions here are going to get pushed away. Nicely done so far as we are just going to be seeing the uh, Queen defense for now. It's pretty good from Bly. I and mean, the thing is he didn't do a lot of damage I would say with those initial Zerglings. So his worker count isn't brilliant. 37 workers apiece. 
generally is pretty favourable for the Terran. Especially when the Terran has the opportunity, I think, to get more damage done with Banshees, etc. Starting to move out onto the map. Things are not going to be able to do much at the front. There's more Hellions coming through, and with even more Hellions coming out, this does start to look like mech play. And the double gas on the natural obviously becomes another big indicator of mech play over the next few minutes here. So, <clears throat> a couple more gases coming up as we see the CC coming through in the main base. And again, Hellions gathering together just outside the front for Reaper as well, so far. Hellions and the Reaper are going to start moving out in towards the center of the map. Some Zerglings up to the top. And they are going to be uh, looking to see what else they can get up to now. As we're going to see a couple of armories continue to come on up. Two more factories building on up as well. You see these Hellions are going to be able to run on through here. Banshee poking away from the side. I mean, the Hellions looking for some damage. They get two workers so far. Now they're realizing that they're probably a little bit stuck in here. There's two more drones again. Gets a few more. I mean, six, seven, eight. Eight's okay, but he goes towards, I guess, this third base where he'll get one more. He got it out with some of the Hellions too, which is pretty good. This Banshee didn't do a lot, but actually killing the Extractor was well, better than doing nothing, right? I mean, it's some damage. He gets a drone or two as well. He's going to come into this side of this mineral line. He does just not quite get another drone. Well, 12 workers in total, it's not bad, and it keeps Bly behind on the work account at the moment. 43 drones to the 50 SCVs. So Bly does trail in that regard for a moment or two here. So you can see those uh, vehicle upgrades continue to come on through here from Future. And again, a couple of Hellions continue to come through the middle of the map. Going to be coming back up towards the upper left-hand side. Roach speed going to be finishing up from Bly in a moment or two, and as that Roach speed finishes... We are going to be seeing this queen continue to come back along. I'm going to be seeing these uh, banshees again just continue to work their way through some more of these creep tumors. So creep continue to get taken down here. Banshees going to get picked off, one of them at least. The queen's doing a good job on that. We are going to be see some, seeing some of this creep spread still pushing forwards as well. So Bly just pushing this out in towards the center of the map. And we are going to be seeing these extractors going to be taken in the next few moments as well. So, just send up into this free base. There's no fourth hatchery. I mean, that's, again, just the way that Bly's been going about this game. He's been behind from the earlier stages, and because of that, everything's just a little bit delayed for him. And so, as we see a third CC of Future landing over here, Bly is still just without a uh, fourth base. As we see a four now coming over, a Banshee coming into chase on around as well. And that's going to start uh, adding a few kills onto those, those roaches. One Roach already getting picked off here, and again, we are going to see the fours especially. will help out a lot with this, so Roach is not having a great time at all, and Future is still having a pretty great game here so far with this mech. Putting himself into a great position. Future is a young player from NA, guys, in case you are wondering. I believe he's... I don't think he's quite as young. I think he's 16-ish. I'm not 100% sure, but he's definitely one of the younger players that we have. I don't think he's as young as Reno and Clem. But he is pretty young, and uh, he's pretty darn good as well. He's pretty freaking good, and uh, yesterday he took down Sol already, just to give you an idea of how good he is. So definitely intrigued to see what more he can come up with over the next few, uh, in the next little while. As you see a couple of fours flying overhead here, through the top side. Siege tank already sieged up. You are going to see those roaches starting to disappear quite quickly. Uh, I mean, SCVs have to be pulled in to try and help out, but... Honestly, a pretty good defense so far. Mostly only Hellions over here, though. Now he's going to lose a few more SCVs because of it. However, fours land over towards the gold base, and now he can start chunking his way through this hatchery. And that's going to start dropping very quickly here. Queen comes in. And again, I mean, the fours are just going to get rid of that as well very quick. Another Queen's going to have to be very careful. And I think Bly's about to lose his fourth base once again. Now, we do see, obviously, 11 workers killed. That's nice for Bly, but does it make up for losing the fourth? Well, I mean, it's good. Maybe not good enough, as we're going to be seeing these uh, couple of fours... Boosting back in towards the center of the map and taking that watchtower. Roach is coming in from both sides. Now going to continue to fight against those uh, fours here. One four gets lifted and the other. And those fours now going to go back home towards the upper left. And we've seen these roaches continue to go in towards the uh, upper left hand side. And well, Bly is still down on supply. Future is killing it right now in this game. Now we're going to be seeing those roaches getting ready to run on in towards this. Uh, Top side, you're going to see a supply depot picked off already, another Marine or two picked off as well. And you're going to be seeing the Muscular Orquins continue coming in right now from Bly. So, still getting set up into this. We're going to see Hellbats and Force trying to fight against those Roaches. Fifth Hatchery down to the south side of Fourth Hatchery on the gold base. Bly double expanding as he kind of needs to with the lack of bases that he has. Four gets saved as well, picked up, and still Bly 
struggling a lot. Now spends his bank on Hydralis, so he starts to get those up. He's got the Vipers in play as well, so he's going to be able to uh, get in towards all of these uh, Vipers, and Bly will be able to start moving out onto the map with them right now. Some more Hellions coming through the middle of the map here, and Roaches are going to come in towards the center and greet these here, so we are going to be seeing these uh, Hellions starting to drop pretty quickly. Roaches doing a good job of... Uh, Coming in towards the middle with that, and we do see again some more Hellions of Future down the right hand side. Going to be coming in towards this uh, base, and we're going to be seeing the uh, couple of drones getting picked off, and also this Spore Crawler taking some more damage too. 13 more Hydras on the way up, and Bly. Oh, he's not maxing out yet. That is scary. The fact that the mech player is going to be maxing out around the same time as Bly. That's going to be pretty freaking crazy as we do see those uh, few Hellions continue to run off away. Hydra's Roaches and Vipers now from Future. Sorry, from Bly coming to the top side, looking to attack into Future in the next few moments. Smart Servos on the way up. Future just being able to morph his Hellions into Hellbats a bit faster, gain the mobility. Land Vikings a bit faster too, is also a bit of an added effect of that. Uh, that's a nice abduct to get rid of a four. Those fours have been kept so safe up until now, but obviously only so much you can do when the Vipers are in play. Vikings will get actually one of the kills on the Vipers, a second Viper. Very nearly goes down as well, to the point where that's probably going to be the end of Bly's push. At least for the Vipers, they're going to head back. But without Vipers, what do you even do in this scenario? Well, Future says, I think it's time to unsiege and maybe move across the map. 175 supply. It means that his reinforcements will stream in behind this push, so he isn't kind of left after a fight with nothing on the map. And that does go a long way as well, as we're going to be seeing. Well, here we go. Future starting to push down through the center. A lot of Hydras over to the right side still as well, looking to see maybe what they can get up to in the next few moments. Hellions are just leading the charge at the moment, and, and yeah, a couple of tanks just sieging up, and oh, there's uh, no blue flame here, actually. That would be starting to... If he had blue flame, those Hydras would be disappear disappearing very quickly. 40 more Hydras on the way up, a couple of Corruptors, and the Grey Spy now is starting to build as well. So getting in towards the Grey Spy as well, right here, so we are going to be having well, Hellions morphing back into Hellabats once again, and still quite a few Hydras up to the top side. Vipers are going to start getting taken down as well. Going to see a second Viper, but that's a great blinding cloud. I mean, Hellbats have to get a lot done, but oh my god, there's so many tanks down to the south. Bly's going to lose a lot in this. I mean, the tank fire is just such a huge wave of tanks that it's just almost endless. I don't think there's a way Bly fights into that, and he's going to have to get himself up into more, uh, well, just more uh, Vipers, honestly, here, if not anything else. Hatchery down to the south side is still set up and waiting to see just what it can do next, as we are going to be having the uh, couple of tanks moving into position. So, I mean, it is going to die, maybe, if Bly can't do anything about this. But Broodlord's coming out, so he's going to hit his next stage of the game, the later stages of this year. And with Broodlords, it becomes a very possible victory for him, perhaps, in the next few moments. Tanks still firing away. There's going to be seeing Hellions and tanks fighting up to this uh, central size position as well. You'll see a few more Hydralists going down here, a couple more tanks on Siege from Future. And some Zerglings going to continue to stream on in towards this third base. So Ling streaming in towards the third base, going to grab us around on that tank, and it is going to be taken down in the next few moments. Again, the counter-attack very nice, and actually Future going to back away. Well, you know, regathering himself and getting ready to push all as one once more is not necessarily a bad idea for himself. So that's maybe what he's starting to set up in toward. As you see this command center over here, this is getting picked away by those couple of Hydras, so the Hydras doing a good job of uh, keeping that low as you see the tanks continuing on down, and they will be able to pick that Hydralis off. So Hydra's going down here, the CC will land on the left hand side, and you can be seeing the Roaches uh, getting picked off too. And now this army of future coming through the center of the map, Hellions, Roaches, uh, Hellions and Tanks mostly making up this army. I mean, the Viking count is good, but is it good enough for the Broodlords? There isn't many Corruptors, honestly, so... I mean, obviously, then it comes down to Hydralisks, and possibly the Vipers, too. Which is up to this top side, getting caught, but... As I say getting caught, the Hellions kind of find them, and they get caught a little bit. A few of them going down. As we are going to be seeing those Roaches still up to the top, looking to see what perhaps they can do next now, as we do see some more Zerglings working their way through this orbital over here. The planetary Forts will defend on the left side. And yeah, another 11 SCVs going down, and Future's economy is hurting a little bit. He's still pushing forwards. I'm just worried, is there enough Vikings to fight the Brood Lords? He gets rid of an Overseer right uh, very quickly. The first Brood disappears as well. Second Brood gets transfused. Continue to fight this year. The Vi uh, Hydras are going down, so the Brood Lords are going to fall. 
And it looks as though Future is going to be able to clean out those Overlords, or sorry, those Broodlords, and Overseer as well. And while well, still the counterattack doing a lot of damage, he actually had some Hydras up here which get rid of the Plantry. So Future is down a very low number of bases, but still might be Bly in the next few moments because those tanks are still pushing in. And they're going to do a lot here. The Hydras accidentally running in towards it for a, few too mo uh, a little bit too long. And you'll see those tanks continue to fire onto this hatchery as well on the right hand side. Wings and Roaches picking off one factory here. This factory also taking some damage. And you'll see just a few more tanks sieging up once again. And you're going to see this gold base going to be under fire too. So Vikings continue to come up in this direction. Another couple of tanks sieging. Oh man, I mean. Army supplies are pretty similar, it's just the lack of economy from Future has to be somewhat concerning here. He only has two bases now. Well, he actually has his third base in the main, so he can relocate that, but he needs to do it soon, because right now his income is non-existent compared to that of Bly's. Vikings coming over to the right, and we are going to be seeing these uh, tanks sieging again, this hatchery. Going to be uh, continue to be picked away. I mean, Bly has so many bases to the bottom side of the map as well, though. And his army currently setting up to maybe come in from a couple of different angles that he needs to. Oh, especially as he unsieges here. Futures on creep. So Bly should see it, but he's not moving. So Bly doesn't move forwards. He doesn't take advantage of that. Maybe one of the better opportunities he had to actually get rid of this army. As everything was unsieged right there. It's going to be slow and patient from Future. Well, he actually unsieges. Now he's going to siege up once again. Some Vikings may actually just have to land here. Because there's mostly only Hydras coming into play. There's no Vipers or anything anymore. And... Oh man, Future loses a lot to this side. His reinforcements just weren't quite here in time, so he loses a crap ton and with flat being lost. Now, of course, we're in this position where Bly is, uh... Well, Bly is just going to have a bit too much, I think. There's not going to be the Siege Tank count here any longer. He picks off a couple of fours. Oh, Future, I really thought had this game in the bag, but now... Again, with the lack of economy, he just can't build up anything else. Bly making more Hydras here, there's a few more Hellions coming across. A few more tanks in production, he does have one base landed again. But Bly is mining up here for a full base, I guess oversaturated right now. The income lead, not quite as high as you might think it would be. But it's going to get bigger as he starts to saturate these workers properly around the map. There's a couple of overlords, that doesn't matter too much at the moment. Future going to aim towards this upper right side, I mean denying bases is going to be hugely important here for his success furthering on in this game. Finds already himself a hideless here, which is nice. Roach as well, I mean every single pick off he can make at the moment is going to be huge for him. Turn around, Corrosive Bow's already coming down, 1-4 gets stuck, the Viking doesn't let it squeeze through there. Halbat's coming back down, but 2-4's now dead. Bly continue to pick these off, so fours continue to disappear. I mean the damage is just not there for Future to be able to clean this up. He didn't even get that many drones to this top right hand side. He went for the kill off there, but he just got himself stuck in a corner. Now we see Future gathering himself in towards the center of the map once more to see what he can do next again. A couple of Hellions, couple of tanks, both gathering together and we are going to see... Well, again, they're just the economy. I've said it a few times, but the economy of Bly is just out of this world compared to Futures. And, you know, now we're going to see Vipers back up, so all of the tech is here for Bly to fight with. And not all of the tech is up here from Future. A few tanks, but that's it. He's got no Vikings to fight the Vipers like he's had, you know, like he has to... like he's had previously. The Widowmine here going to be burrowing into the ground. We're going to be seeing this a uh, couple of Hellions top side. Again, picked away, again, chased away as well. And we're going to see this spine crawler coming on through and is going to be uh, setting up on the upper right. So, spine setting up. We do see these hydras coming on through the top as well. Going to be pushing in towards this uh, orbital. So, I'm going to push in towards this orbital tank. Does fire away, and hydra's taking a little bit of damage right now. You're going to see this orbital continue to take a little bit of damage. Here's going to see this hellion. As Hellbat does move forwards, I'm just going to be seeing the uh, tank firing away. Bly does uh, have to pull through this top side again. Some more roaches to the left hand side, and looking to see where they can go. We're going to see the tanks firing away once more. We don't mind to help out. And this roach is disappearing. So we'll see a couple of hydras do end up going down. So a couple of hydras do fall. And again, Bly coming through the middle with hydras and vipers. Looking to see what he can do as he is pushing up in towards this uh, orbital. And this old will probably going to die, right? I mean, there's only one tank here gets... Well, just Blinding Cloud is actually really nice because obviously the missile turret gets caught in it. Bly turns this around and he gets game one of this best of five. As well, you can subscribe to the stream. 
Uh, subscribing is one of the best ways for you guys to support. You get yourselves regular replay packs, our newest replay pack going out in a couple of days. But you can also get access to the December replay pack, over 550 replays from Innovation, Cest, Rogue, Solar, Stats, uh, Snooze, Uthermal, Neeb, Showtime. All of those fantastic players, a ton of replays from those guys in the... Um, in the uh, replay pack from December. That's available to you if you subscribe today. Of course, if you've got that Twitch Prime, you can use subscribe with that as well. It does help me as well to continue being a full-time StarCraft 2 caster, streamer, and content producer. Twitch Prime subs are free. You get one free sub a month. And uh, you also get ad-free viewing on the entirety of Twitch while still supporting the streamer for any ads they run. So do check out that Twitch Prime maybe as an option if you're getting a sick of watching the ads or something. And of course, uh, if you want to support further, there's other options such as donations and cheers. But for now, let's uh, do this game number two and look to see which direction we're going to go in from each of these players for the early to mid stages. Because we are on Ascension to Iron, a nice large map to get us started on this second game. As we have to the bottom right hand side, it is our Red, Zerg, uh, Red Terran player from Rival Gaming. It is Future. Top left hand side, our blue Zerg from Team Expert is Bly. Alright, so game number two as we get set up into this. Bly coming through the center of the map with overlords and the reapers just popping out nicely timed for us to start following and watch the little bit of the initial dance between reaper and zerglings in these early stages so reaper coming in towards the upper left hand side now and uh, getting ready to go so reaper will hop on up and we are going to see some zerglings here will be ripe for the picking at Reaper throws down a grenade as well, and those links going to get blasted around just slightly here. The very early stages looking to be very normal, much more normal than the last game where Bly did actually open with a ton of Zerglings early on, remember? He had a lot of Zerglings which he uh, flooded in with kind of times and time and again. As now we do see that Reaper pushed away. And Future just, uh, yeah, just going to sit outside of the natural as you're going to be seeing the uh, link. Takes a little bit of damage there. Well. Link speed is starting up right now from Bly. He is uh, going to get that finish, but again, no kind of massive links this time around. Just going to be seeing the uh, drones continue to come on through for now. Going to be seeing the queen, the second queen, about halfway done. Uh, so I guess a second queen, a second queen off of the natural hatchery, third queen in total. And Bly's still mining a little bit of gas here. We'll see if he wants to go nematized carapace or maybe just a fast lair. Maybe just use this for an upgrade. There's a lot of different options he kind of leaves open available to him. I mean, it wouldn't be like the fastest lair in the world, but a free base, free, free hatch lair, still lets you get, say, hydras up very quickly. As future. Well, we'll see if he wants to change things up as well. Some players have been mixing up a lot more between kind of bio and mech play. And so I suppose we will see here whether it's going to be the case once again or whether we're going to be seeing the uh, little bit of a different setup, I suppose, of kind of. Uh, you know, is it going to be mech or is he just going to be playing bio now to switch it up? Again, he could maybe play mech every game if he wants to. That's definitely a possibility. And as we get this uh, set to go... Ah, the stream title's wrong. Sorry, guys. A little bit uh, out of it today. Fly versus future. Sorry. Usually been, I've been quite good at updating the stream title, so... Uh, I appreciate it. Viking over here does pick off that overlord. Reduce him some Hellions from future, pushing up this right hand side. What's up, CF Her? Coming in for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Appreciate the Twitch Prime support. Let's get some Warty Hearts in the chat, please, people, for CF Her. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, as we do see these couple of Hellions coming up the left hand side right now, looking to see what they can get up to. As Bly just going to be sat overhead with this Overlord. Waiting to see what's going to be happening in the next few moments still. Looking to maybe run by a little bit. Bly does have the Rotor on the way up. In the end of the day, his gas is just being put in towards this uh, Carapace upgrade. And maybe save enough to start a few Roaches. And again, I mean, it leaves you with options, right? You know, if you keep that max gas mining just a little bit, it means if you do need to suddenly start a Rotor on quickly, you're not suddenly having to find gas out of nowhere or so. As we do see the Hellions continue to come down this left hand side 
And more Hellions are going to be coming across over to the left in the next few moments as well. More and more Roaches building up here from Bly as we're going to be seeing the double armory from Future coming up as well in the back of the main base. And again, these Hellions just pushing on through and a couple of Creep Tumors not going down at all. That's a very weird scan to then not get any of the creep. Okay, he turns back around. Uh, that's very weird though, because I mean, this should have been all of this creep. Now he gets like a couple of tumors that don't even matter, because these active ones are still here, and oh my god, Future is having a bit of a nightmare moment or so, as he totally nearly loses that Banshee as well. It takes a couple of shots on it as it moves on through. Well, Hellion's coming in towards the middle of the map, as we're going to be seeing these Zerglings just nibbling away on those depots. So we are going to see the Lings getting down. I mean, good defense from Future there. Shouldn't really take any damage to that, and he doesn't. Third CC is moving into play, and it is again just confirmation that it is Mech now. Extra factories coming on through the starport, waiting patiently for a reactor to land onto. Benefits of casting this series from Ripley didn't have to wait for the lag of Future to pass on by. Which is always, uh... Which is always nice. So you just see this Viking from Future pulling back down in towards the center. Chaos Fluffy in the chat, when I can when can I see Dark vs. Mario again? It was, isn't on YouTube. Yeah, it won't be on YouTube for a few days. But uh, you can watch yesterday's VOD. If you go into this, basically the videos on Twitch, the VOD from yesterday was the first series we casted, so it is in there. Alright. You see some Hellions still moving around in the middle at the moment here as we're going to be seeing the uh, Roaches of Bly continue to push on through the center. A couple of Banshees here are going to be working their way through a couple of Roaches as well. We are going to be seeing the Queens are going to be able to pick off. No, the Banshees get out of range of the Overseer just at the right time there in the uh, later stages. It's going to be seen again the couple of Queens and the Roach from Bly continue to move down towards this bottom left hand side. Some more roaches just gathering up together. Two banshees still in the middle of the map. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, well, the hive tech coming up now from Blight. So setting up in towards that. The plus one missile attack upgrade as well here. Continuing to come on through. Banshee taking a little bit of damage as well as you see roaches coming through the uh, bottom side. Blight starting to. Uh, well, just keep on moving over, I guess, at the moment, so a lot more roaches continue on along in this direction and just seeing where it can get to, seeing what it can get up to here over the next couple of moments as we do have Hellions fighting against those roaches right now. Still just doing a little bit of damage, so roaches do get pushed on away for the moment. Again, looking to see if the spire coming on up. We will be seeing the uh, great spire coming in nice and quickly. Supply just looking to get straight in towards Broodlords here. And as we do have the uh, three roaches around into the center. Hellions are still moving around here too. Looking to see what's going to be happening. And we've seen this uh, couple of tanks back towards this third base as well. Getting set up. Still a missile turret and an SEV to the right hand side. And we are going to be seeing this uh, barracks. He's uh, getting ready to roll. Just sat there. He's just like, yo, look at all this uh, cool information I'm giving you. And this Banshee's like, yeah, I'm just going to make sure you you know, you know, kind of stay in shape. You don't mess around too much. A couple of 4s dropping in. Oh my god, these Hydras are so close to the Medivacs. There's no realistic way you can pick those up. No! Future, this is a bit of a disaster for him. There's no way he can pick it up. He loses a Medivac while trying. That means he's going to lose both 4s, which is a huge part of his kind of early game pressure. Just disappearing from his hands right now. And... Now all of a sudden losing that, that is absolutely crazy as we're going to be seeing these uh, roaches just pushed on forwards. So roaches coming through the center of the map, those hellions going to be pushed away for future. You've seen the Miska Augments upgrade from Bly starting up here as well. And a few more Broodlords starting to morph into so Bly setting up into a few Broods here. A couple of Corruptors on the way out and... Well, this last game he didn't actually have Corruptors to protect the Broodlords, and so this game maybe he will. It could go a long way, of course, against those Vikings. Just stops them from basically just kind of targeting down the Vi uh, the Broodlords super quickly and super easily. Hellions come on over to the right-hand side here, and they are going to be taking a position. 
And Brutes continue to be added on in as we do see fours continuing to come on up. So a lot of fours, obviously the anti-air stage of this army is getting uh, rah, kind of built up here right now. As you're going to see that uh, fourth base gets kind of put down down here from future. So he starts up the fourth uh, command center here. And again, some roaches and hydras just gathering together. Bly is uh, going to keep on pushing down towards this bottom right-hand side, it seems. A couple of tanks here that can siege up as well. Very soon it will be happening, I'm sure. As those tanks do uh, pick that roach off. So roach gets picked off. A few more brews morphing in. Six more brews. It's going to be 11 in total. Now he doesn't have any corruptors left. I do get a little bit worried. I mean, last game the brews did just disappear very quickly. They did put Bly, I think, into a big kind of issue at points. I was going to be seeing Hellbats tanks gathering and gathering. And we do see actually a little bit of a counterattack from Future 2 to the left side, but there's going to be creep to spot this coming. So Bly should be able to kind of see this and respond. First set of Brutalians finding some targets to land upon. Well, the fours. There's a bunch of them over here. Future means to make sure he's not missing kind of a huge chunk of his army uh, as he goes along with this. He scans this army moving to the right hand side, so now he may be able to gather these units together. This army coming around the top too, so just really focus on pure counterattack styles here against our Zerg to try and uh, keep him in this, just can't, you know, attacking around the Broodlords basically. Now these Hellbats leave the tankers alone in the background though, they are going to be okay for now, but should probably stay a little bit close to them, just because they will go be a kind of a big part of actually being able to do damage to help out. Now Bly says, okay, enough's enough, I'm not going to let you just get away with attacking around as you wish. I'm going to be uh, dropping in, as we're going to see Widow Mines trying to drop on top and burrow beneath the Broodlords, and a couple of them will go off, but there wasn't that many Widow Mines to begin with here. That said, though, Future is looking as though he's going to be able to clean this up. The Broods are going down, the Fours have done a good job, and Future is going to clean up this army. As his army gets cleaned up, there's a few more roaches to the south side trying to break their way through and towards this uh, mineral line here at the moment. It's going to be seeing those uh, SCVs taking a little bit of damage, and the last couple of roaches will be cleaned on out, as Blind will have to spend his bank now to get his army back up and rolling. Well, a good defense by Future against the initial wave of Broodlords, and all those Broods going down means that now, well, one Viper free Broods and Mass Hydra is basically the composition that's very engageable. That's something you really can, uh, that's something you really can fight. I was going to be seeing sort of all of these Widow Mines, Hellbats, Fours, etc. coming through the center to see what they can do next. Another Roach getting picked off, and one to the left hand side getting taken down as well. Future continue to uh, get set up into this here, and we are going to be seeing another scan. Hydralis from Bly going to be able to start pushing on forwards. Tank fire again, and one set of Hydras getting taken down to now. Four up the right, a couple of fours on this right hand side. All of these units just gathering up together, and we will see Future thinking about dropping in towards this uh, hatchery on the top side. Flyer Carapace coming on up right now from Bly as well, as we're going to be seeing some more Hydra's going to be kind of coming on through here and going to be able to start doing a bit more damage. Oh my god, that Widow Mine. There's a lot of friendly fire onto SCVs. SCVs staying strong. Future is maxed out here. This Hatchery does go down. A couple of fours dropping over there, and they are able to be successful. More successful than the earlier four drop that got cleaned up in the earlier stages of the mid game. I mean, really got shut down pretty hard. Bly got in position. He stopped the Medivacs from being able to save the fours. Obviously, that alone is kind of a huge deal. I love these Hydras gathering together right now with the Broodlords, Vipers, and Corruptors up in the sky above to support it. We see more of these Hydras from uh, Bly down on the south. They're looking to see what they can go and do for the next few moments as well. You're going to be seeing a little bit of a skirmish in the middle of the map here. Is going to be seeing Wooded Mine still in the Medivacs, ready to be kind of pulled on through. Very difficult to fight against these uh, Hydras with just the uh, fours, though. Needing the splash damage, really. Some Wooded Mines will try and burrow towards the latter tail of these Hydras. And you just get a few kills with them. You still load those back up into the uh, Medivacs, I'd imagine. His Hydra attack still to the south. Also, some Roaches on this fresh party fortress. Not going to be able to do too much more once it comes up. But until then, he will clean out the majority of any SCVs that were preemptively mining on this base. Pushing on forwards here, Future in an aggressive position. Again, some of his ego being denied, but this army is still scary. A lot of Broodlords coming into play, though. And that's where those uh, Widow Mines are going to have to come into uh, action. He's got about 10 of them. He needs them to get good connections. There's a lot of supply to have caught up in just Widow Mines if they don't do a lot here. The issue is, how do you get on top of the Widow, uh, on top of the Broodlords when there's so many Hydras beneath them? I think that's the kind of issue Future is having. The Blinding Cloud comes down, so the Fours can't even do anything too useful right now, apart from attacking Broodlings. 
In future pulling back a little bit, the tanks will siege and oh my god, the Hydras are not going to let any of those Widow Mines go off at all. That's a disaster right there. And as the Broods continue to drop down Broodlings, Siege Chank after Siege Chank goes down. And that's pretty much going to be it. I mean, Bly's cleaned this up. Future is no longer maxed out. And again, having taken damage at home, he's been losing a lot of eco. And so his economy really isn't up there either. Let's try and do a little... Sorry about that, guys. Expert just crashed. And I uh, tried to get it back up ASAP. Hopefully it was if within kind of 30 seconds or so. So, um... Apologies for that. Just before it went down, basically this army was pushing towards the bottom side and obviously Bly just had way too much from what we had already seen. So, uh, sorry for missing the very end of this game, but I'm going to reinstall in a day, uh, the next couple of days, but obviously don't want to do it when we have so many big events just in case something does completely break. Anyways, uh, let's uh, go into this and go into game number three of this series. Uh, again, CF Her, thank you for the sub during that last game. And Taka stuff of the cheer 10 as we came back. Very, very much as well. Again, sorry for that issue, guys. Sorry for the crash. It was exploit based. Do apologize. This is the top left hand side. Our blue Terran player is Future. Going up against the red Zerg player to the bottom right hand side from Team Expert. It is Bly. Game three of this best of five, and Bly does find himself on match point. As we get set up and ready to go in uh, game three of this series. Again, are we going to see mech again? I mean, what a map for mech, of course. It almost kind of like forces Future's hand a little bit as to, okay, I mean, how do you justify playing Bio on Abyssal Reef when mech is just so good on this map? I mean, it may be that he just wasn't planned on switching into Bio at all this series, in which case, obviously, on this great map for him to maybe finally get a map on the uh, scoreboard for himself, so. Let's find out in the next couple of moments, as this Reaper so far has just been dancing with Zerglings, doing some bits and pieces here and there. What's up, Matteo87 in the chat, coming in with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Give us some love in the chat for Matteo87. Thank you subscribe for subscribing with that Twitch Prime. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, the sub count. You know, I keep saying it, guys, but the sub count's crazy lately. It's uh, really kind of insane. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Alright, we're going to be seeing this Reaper hopping up in towards the main base then, looking to see what is uh, going to happen. There's Alak coming in with a sub as well. Wow, a little bit of a sub, mini sub train. What would be a mini, what, what even is a mini train called? Like, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, I guess it's like the like a metro, <laughs> a metro. I just just it doesn't work. Does it doesn't work at all? I, I should shut up. I'm trying to be funny, and I'm not good at being funny. Hey, like thank you so much for the sub as well. Can you get uh, some more body hearts in the chat, please? Thank you very much for the uh, for the sub for the support. Appreciate it. All right, some Hellions gathering up together on the natural expansion here, so. They are getting ready to go, as you're going to be seeing the uh, Viking working its way through the Overlord in the main base. It's going to get taken down in a couple of moments. Cloak on the way up for the Banshee here as well. We haven't talked much about these builds, but they've been looking very similar to before. They're kind of like a Hellion Banshee sort of opening. We've seen this a couple of times, and in the meantime, Bly going into a lab and a Rotron to get himself set up as well. Hellion's going to be diving on in, and they are going to be starting to roast up a whole bunch of these drones right now. And we are going to be seeing these uh, drones continue to take quite a bit of damage, so... Actually, those uh, workers continue to drop very quickly right now. That's a lot of damage done. So now we're going to see even more workers coming in over here, going down. I mean, that's 13, 14 kills. Is it going to be a 14? I think so. This Hellion gets one more. Maybe even one more as well. Out of range of the Queens, but he missed targets. Well, he gets out of there alive, at least. So obviously, that's a pretty big positive as well. As we are going to be seeing the uh, alien continue to sit up on the right-hand side. Infestation Pit now coming down from Bly also here on this uh, main base. And we're just going to be seeing those queens from Bly also injecting away on this natural expansion. Getting set up and ready to go as well. Infestation Pit from Bly is about halfway done. And we are going to be seeing those Hellions of Future coming through the middle of the map and 
looking to see what maybe they can get up to in the, the next few moments as well. So, a little bit of a Hellion attack here from Future as he moves on down towards the lower right-hand side. You are going to see the Vikings able to pick off this Overlord, and we are going to be able to see these Hellions able to uh, pick their way through a whole bunch of these drones. So, all of these drones starting to go down. That's five workers killed already. Oh my god, he's going to get eight workers killed and more to come. Oh my god, the Italian run by this game have been absolutely deadly and bly. Feels as though he doesn't have the chance to make anything other than drones again. So we are just going to be seeing those uh, Hellions continue to work their way through a few more of these workers. A model train could be uh, what we call the... <laughs> I mean, but then still a train, and I guess that's the whole point of it. Anyways. Let's, um... Continue to, uh... Sub trolley. <laughs> ah, that's that's a good one. The sub trolley, the mini sub train. Anyways, we you see the third orbital coming on up here from Future, whose economy is obviously going to be looking fantastic in comparison to Bly's. After you kill 30 plus workers in the first six minutes of the game, you're generally going to have it in a pretty solid position to move on through. Throws down the double armor, and oh my god, the Banshee comes in to get even more damage done as well. So just a couple of workers picked off right there, and this Banshee now going to back away over to the left-hand side. Going to pull back up through the center, where there is a Creep Tomb actually to the left. And starting to come on down, and actually does just get cancelled right there too. Two Banshees then going to move through, and we're going to see one uh, Creep Tomb again picked off, a second one as well. And we are going to be seeing yeah, a little bit of this Creep continue to get picked away at. And those Banshees uh, pushing back quite nicely here, as we do have the... Uh, A couple of them coming back up to the top side, and, uh, yeah, I mean, nice, uh, nice bits and pieces of damage done as we're going to be seeing these, uh, Cryptimus continue to push on forwards and towards the middle to the left-hand side, we're going to be seeing these few roaches. It's going to be seeing a, uh, Cryptimus does indeed get picked away at right there, so... We've seen the 1 1 upgrades come in right now from Future. We're also going to see those few swarm hosts on the way up from Bly as well. The burrow upgrade coming through for him, so this is something Bly likes to do. He likes to put the swarm hosts in one location, burrow them, and just leave them there. Automatically send locusts every time they come off cooldown into a rally position. It's pretty sick because we're going to be seeing those aliens on the left side are going to be able to uh, pick their way through some of these roaches. So, roaches are going to get picked away at here and they are going to fall. We are going to be seeing the uh, still, um, a barracks to the left-hand side as well. Oh my god, these Banshees have picked up five more kills. These Banshees are going huge right now, as we're going to be seeing uh, oh, a few more drones going down. Again, here come the Queens to try and keep pushing those Banshees back. The Banshees are just going to have to pull away all the way down to the south side here. Where they're just going to have to uh, well, hide away a little bit. Lions picking up another couple of Creep Tumors. Another Creep Tumor at the very front goes down also. Nicely done. Again, really feels as though this game... It actually feels as though, like, every game so far, Future puts himself into a great position against Bly. But he loses out as the game goes longer. And we'll see if this game's going to be more of the same, because right now he's putting himself in that great position. But can he actually follow through and close this down this time? Because, again, like, time after time, it seems like Bly just finds his way back into it very uh, difficult... Yeah, very, you know, in the end... In the late game, as we're going to see a few SCVs going down here, the Locust getting some kills. And again, this is just where Bly starts to be annoying with those Swarm Hosts over time. Not a huge amount of them, build up a lot of Roaches as well, but forces units to come in to defend, it forces SCVs to pull away. As we do see, those Roaches going to get ready to maybe try and deny this fourth base from morphing into a Plandry right away. Just keep this from being kind of mined from, effectively, for a little bit. But two tanks sieging up makes it difficult, and in the end he just gets a refinery kill. Not even a missile turret coming up to help hold this position. Ah, if you just saw on top of what Bly is doing here, and you realize that these swarm hosts are up here or something already, and so he is going to be able to pick off two of them, actually. is a pretty big deal. Now he's uh, only going to be four locusts able to fly into the natural expansion too, and Bly will have to relocate those locusts or swarm hosts just slightly here. But losing two already is actually a big deal as well. I mean, it's just way less damage to be done than otherwise. Hi, Van Spire continuing to come on up right now as we're going to be seeing Bly. We'll be going into the Gorilla Spire here very shortly. More roaches coming down the right, and a lot of these Hellions getting picked away at. So a lot of those uh, Hellions disappearing, and another scan into the main base. So we're just seeing the kind of timing of the hive here gives Future, of course, a bit of an idea. Well, how long do I have until, for example, Vipers might become an issue? How long do I have until... 
you know, I have to realistically be thinking about Brute Lords. Nice uh, scan as you see again. Locust coming into the natural, but not really able to achieve anything here. And there's Roaches to the left hand side, going to push on forwards, and they're going to be able to get one tank nice and quickly. And some more of those Roaches getting picked away at as well. And roaches do get uh, rid of a refinery there also. Tanks continuing to siege, and again, those Roaches just being picked away at. There's eight Corruptors on the way up. The Greatest Spire coming through. I mean, Bly, every game against this mech style has gone in towards these Brood Lords. And this game is no different than those previous games. Heartless Dan coming on up here from Bly. So again, that's set up in towards the main base. And we do see the Roaches pulling back on over to the right-hand side. The Banshees of Future in towards the center. And you are going to see the Hellions again working their way through those rocks. Continue just kind of open up this position. As you see the Hellions and tanks breaking through this location as well. Obviously, uh, well, just opens up the chance to maybe uh, push down a little bit more easily across the map. I mean, the thing is, Great Spy is finished, and so Broodlords can morph, and so Future will not hit pre Broodlords. And the problem is, does he even have like a pre, you know, an anti Broodlord force right now? Uh, not really, nine Vikings, but there's ten Corruptors up. It depends how many Broods get made. So even though Future is so far ahead in the supply because of how this game went up until now, now we're in this position where basically Bly is able to kind of stick around and stay alive anyways. Hellions continue to roast their way through a few of these roaches at the moment. You're going to see another scan coming down on this low ground hatch. Just checking what's here as you obviously see Future wants to take a position to start trying to deny this. And that's exactly what's happening right here and right now. This hatchery is going to get denied over the next few moments. So that hatchery goes down. A few more Broodlings disappear and Vikings in the sky is starting to go huge onto some of these Corruptors. So they're starting to get a whole bunch of kills. You're going to see those Hellbats pushing on through in towards this uh, natural expansion as well here. Again, those Broodlords kind of having a pretty fun time so far. Firing down with those Broodlings and getting quite a bit done. This hatchery does go down. It's going to be seeing Corruptors and Vipers coming in the uh, Parasitic Bombs. Really starting to do a little bit of something. The Vikings continue to fight this out. And I mean, he got rid of the Vipers. He's going to be able to keep on fighting the Corruptors. But the Broodlords are having the time of their life. I mean, there's nothing to fight against the Broodlords. The one redeeming factor right now is that the Hellbats are cleaning up the Broodlings very quickly. But now the Broodlings are going in towards Siege Tanks. And so Future has to unseage them back away. Those Hellbats go down. And the very end here, one Corruptor will leave, uh, remain standing. And as those Vikings Corruptors have had a very long fight. Both taken forever to take each other down. By the way, Bly with no upgrades at all as well at the moment. Just fighting this with no upgrades because he probably knew he was down in supply and knew he was in trouble. If he was building upgrades, he probably just wouldn't have had the unit numbers to be able to actually get into this. So it would have delayed his Broodlords and then maybe he would have died to this attack. Also going to be seeing Bly continuing to push this back. And obviously at this stage, Future will falls on the way up once again. A couple more Vikings. I'm surprised we don't just see the kind of even just like more starports. Like he stays on one starport time and time again here, Future. But even the couple of uh, starports, you know, adding one, adding two more, that could go such a huge way to do so much more in all of this. As you're going to be seeing those hydras and roaches just pulling back all the way down the right side, and just going to be seeing a few queens getting set up as well. Broodlord's still up overhead. You're going to be seeing a few more fours coming through. Rapid fire launches coming in for the cyclones. The scan comes down as well, a little bit creep spread. Being cleaned up as well. We're going to be seeing those couple of spy spores at the front continue to be picked away at. And you see again both those spores getting taken down. Tanks will siege and they're going to start doing a lot of damage at the moment. Starting to really pick their way through a whole chunk of units. Another queen going down. The roaches and hydras disappearing. That's going to be seeing these tanks on siege. And we will see a few more broodlings getting picked away off here. But he kills off a base. And so a nice little poke forwards here from Bly. We're going to see those uh, vipers. With the, uh, with the uh, energy being gained and consumed off of this hatchery, just getting set up and ready to go. Well, a few tanks here from Future leading the charge once again, and we are going to be seeing the plus three, plus three continue to come on through. Eight more hydras coming on up, and we are going to be seeing roaches coming in towards the upper right hand side to deny this tank attack. I mean, this is going to work wonderfully. I mean, the tanks on move command obviously helps as well, but I mean, the tanks aren't going to get a chance to siege if they do. The roaches go on top of them and. Well, I mean, kiting backwards even still, it's a good trade from Bly to get rid of tanks for roaches. It's always going to be efficient, as long as it's not redeemed, as long as it's not like one tank for like 30 roaches, of course. Anyways, we do see these queens in a little bit of trouble as well. The full army is obviously pretty powerful right now. What is a Broodlord count looking like? Only six. 
It's mostly Hydras, and Blight does a very good job of doing this, where he switches back into Hydras as the kind of the four count rises. Because he, against the Hydras, you kind of want more tanks. You know, the Brood Lords are going to be counted by the force to some extent. Future pulling away once again. Two tanks did end up staying alive up here, and they will in the end get a siege up onto this hatchery on the right. And so able to see each other on this uh, right hand hatchery as we're going to be seeing another Viper pulling through a unit in the middle there. Some tanks firing once again. Some more Broodlords, some more Broodlings coming on down. And we're seeing those uh, fours continue to fight at the moment. We're going to see Vikings in some trouble. We're going to be seeing the Corruptors continue to fight away here. The Vikings all disappearing. All of those going down so very quickly. And now those tanks are going to be in trouble too. The fours will stay alive. There's just no answer to the Broodlords again still. The Vikings aren't working out, the Fords can't get in range, and so we just don't see a way for uh, this army to do enough at the moment, it seems. Small Queen's going to gather together on this 5th uh, Hatchery as we're going to be seeing these couple of tanks. Setting up as well for future. I see this command center coming up to the top side, and you'll still see a lot of these uh, factories continue to come on up into play. He's got so many factories, by the way. That's what, like 13 factories? It's an insane amount of reproduction, but to be fair, he has a bank to use it, so I mean, it definitely makes sense for now, setting that set up. We've seen those uh, factories still set up over here. Some SCVs realizing he has too many are going to come across the map as well. Good to you try and do a little bit more. Eighteen workers going down, and we are going to see a, a couple of crypt units getting picked away at too. So some bits and pieces of damage at the moment as we're going to be seeing future continue moving around this right hand side. Hydras come forwards and abduct in. Is going to be a couple of Tefors killed off. Oh bly. Looking for some more of those abducts again. I mean, the fours on their own just don't really have a way to fight against these Hydras. It's the Widow Mines again to try and deal with the uh, Broodlords, but again, what can the Widow Mines do if they try and fly on top of Hydras? I mean, they just don't get a chance to even fire. We saw that back on Odyssey. Or was it Ascension Aya? Either way, one of those uh, two maps, it was the first map. I think it was Ascension Aya. It wouldn't make sense for them to have played Odyssey. Um, I mean, they just didn't work, right? There was just too many Hydras underneath, and so the uh, Widow Mines weren't able to do enough. So what do you actually do then? Because, I mean, okay, Future's maxed out, he has a bank, but if you can't actually get rid of this army of Bly, you're going to be in trouble still. You're still going to have a really tough time basically doing anything at all, as you're going to see these Vipers consuming a little bit more. More Hydras from Bly coming up to the top side here. Extra Spore Crawl is going to be finishing. A couple of scans coming down, and we are going to be seeing Bly. Just pulling back slightly at the moment. So many Widow Mines at the moment in those Medivacs. Well, again, if the Widow Mines get a chance to blow up everything, of course, they could do major damage, but will they get that chance? Still remains to be our question. A few Vikings do land, a Widow Mine burrows pretty quick and quick. And the four is actually getting a good shot off onto the Viper right away, actually deterring that from doing something. And, I mean, the thing Future is doing is he's keeping Bly on five bases as well. That is nice. Future has a six base up himself, so, I mean, that is nice, but he kind of needs it, considering he isn't trading well against this army of Bly recently. Well, Ford's still trying to push on through the south side, and we are going to be seeing this army still pushing on into position. And we are going to see, oh my god, a blinding cloud, those fours. Well, here we go with the Widow Mines. They're going to start burrowing on mass, and they are going to get a chance to go off, but they mostly go off on Brood Lanes. Oh my god, now the Brood Lords do start to disappear, so that's a little bit better. A lot more of those Broods disappearing, but there's only three Brood Lords left over. That's still enough, but the big issue is probably as well is the fact there's just so many Hydralisks that are doing so much also. And these Vipers still have abducts available. This four is going to go down. You don't get back here, buddy. I Sometimes I really feel... Um, maybe this was already done in a carbot animation. I'm not sure. But, like, I really feel like when a Viper tries to yunk a four, I really feel as though they should try to abduct it, but realize it's just too heavy. And so, like, instead of, like, the four being pulled to the Viper, the Viper's tongue, like, stretches out as though it's, like... Because it's, like... I'm imagining it being, like, an elastic band or something. So, it, like, stretches out... But instead of the four moving because it's so heavy, the Viper just gets pulled into the four and like just crashes into it and just like blows up. Just splatters across the back of the four. It's just like, oh shit. I, I don't know. It just looks funny when those uh, Vipers are able to actually pick up fours, man. They're like massive units. They can just get brought along like that. 
Freaking vipers are crazy, man. There's some real kind of crazy evolution shit going on for their tongues. And there is going to be seen coming forwards right now. We're going to be seeing the blinding cloud, and while well, this base goes down, it's just praising future for being able to get a six base up, but is not able to defend it right away. He actually goes for the counter attack across the map, rather than continuing through the top side. So Hellbats and Tanks continue to come in this direction. We're going to see Broodlots from the sky dropping down some Broodlings, and Spore Crawler helping to get rid of a medevac here as well. Vikings still trying to fight a way out, and we are going to be seeing new spores. Continue to disappear too. The tanks will siege up and those hydras, oh my god, are not going to disappear because look at them blinding clouds. All of a sudden, the future has absolutely no damage going out on this army. And by the time the blinding clouds fade, he has so little left over. Those hydras are going to be able to clean up so much more. Fours keep going down. GG is called. And Bly will take game three of this series.